Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm going to be talking about my pants collection. This isn't something I normally talk about, not deliberately, but uh, you know, I'm more focused on the footwear, the boots, the, the watches, um, other elements of the style. But I, I realized that, yes, I do often neglect to talk about the pants, which is sort of like the cherry on top of the sundae when it comes to boots. And so my buddy Dave at the Vintage Future, otherwise known as Boots of Manish Leather on Instagram, he encouraged me to do a video just talking about my pants and my pants collection. So this is most of my pants right here. Uh, so we have four stacks and what they mostly are, and not to sound boring, but these are mostly all one thing. These are all J. Crew 484 cut pants. And so my strategy with acquiring these, as you can see, I have a few stacks. What I do is I just, I periodically check the J. Crew sale, men's sale, section if i see any 484s in there i typically see like what's available if they're new to the sale they'll typically have every single color available and so what you end up with is you can end up getting like four or five pairs of pants that are priced between like a hundred dollars 150 dollars in some cases and you can score all those for like they'll be doing like 30 percent off plus an additional 50 percent off or something like that and then so what it ends up looking like is i'll spend 150 bucks and i'll get like five pairs of pants like really perfect fitting pants in different colors and so uh, my recent example of that are these these are called the five pocket stretch pant and they're stretchy they're super duper comfortable and i got one in each color so i'm wearing one it's like a cobalt blue and then this is a sky blue and yeah i got them all for like 30 bucks they're originally probably like 80 90 100 dollars i don't i don't know the the full price but um but that's my strategy is like i just periodically check the men's the j crew website probably every couple weeks just to see what's going on there and yeah typically not tip not not every time but especially when we're going through a season season change you check on their website and you can really get some outstanding deals so for example these are all these four plus the ones that i'm wearing so i got a khaki a green an olive drab color i think they called this dill pickle i think they called this color and then yeah this like lighter blue sky blue they're all super comfortable 484 so that's that's a slim cut it's not skinny but it's slim and I, th this is the other thing is i realized several years ago that my favorite leg opening is the 14 inch full leg opening yeah my favorite leg opening is the 14 inch I don't like anything above that. In fact, even 14 and a half, I'm starting to get like, <laughs> cause if there's one thing that I really don't like, it's, it's a wide pant opening because I feel that, not that the wide pant itself looks bad, but I feel like you're draping fabric over the boot you're hiding your shoe or your boot. And I like the shoe to be the most prominent thing. This is my personal preference. I like my boot to, to show, to shine louder than the pants especially the leg opening. I do not like the leg opening to cover or to hide my boot. The aesthetic that I'm always running from is the tiny little shoe poking out beneath a huge drape of pant fabric. I just, I don't like that look at all. I prefer the boot to be accentuated through the silhouette and the way that you achieve that is by having a slimmer, more tapered leg opening at the bottom because the wider it is, the more your boot is sort of hidden and ensconced and muffled beneath the fabric whereas the slimmer the slimmer your leg opening the more the more your boot is able to shine through and, and show itself so that's that's kind of my thinking behind it i'm really impressed when i see that look i really find it to be like a like a stunning manly look i, I don't you know I, I grew up wearing boot cut erroneously thinking because i thought that i needed more room and so I thought that the boot cut offered me more room. That's completely not true. The taper at the bottom of your leg does not affect how it fits up here. I mean, most of you guys know that, but it, you know, I, cause I have thicker thighs and I always have. And so when I thought about tight pants, pants being too tight, I'd, I'd look at the slim fit pants and think, oh, those look suffocatingly tight. But I didn't realize like they're just slim at the bottom. They're not slim in, in the mid region or in your thigh region or buttock region that's gonna depend on your waist size, not so much whether the pant is a slim cut or a straight cut or a boot cut. That's, the, the cut doesn't matter for how it fits up here. So, <laughs> so anyways, with that sort of philosophy out of the way, yeah. So I think I spent 150 bucks and got these five pairs of pants recently, and they're just 
they're amazing. They're so these are the five pocket pant. They're stretchy. They're they're sort of a denim consistency, sort of a chino. They're incredible. And if you paid the full MSRP price, you end up spending like five hundred dollars. So, but the way that I cut corners is yeah, I I watch the J Crew website. I wait for things to go on sale and then I go from there. So most of these are J Crew 484s. Now there are some exceptions to that and I do have some premium selvage denim, but uh that's its own discussion probably for later. I've got I've got those down here too. So I could talk about those. Yeah, the selvage thing. I I play I play that game because it sort of comes with the territory, but do I enjoy the selvage more? I, I like the the look of the selvage ID stitch. You know, the selvage stitch on the inside of the pants. I love cuffing them and seeing that. But if I'm being honest, like it's sort of like more of a rite of passage if I'm if I'm being frank. They are rigid denim, so they're less comfortable. They don't stretch as much. Most of these from J. Crew, these 484s are stretchy, and I just feel so much more comfortable in them throughout the day. Really lets my blood circulate well. I really throw on my selvage. So this is these are my premium denims. So what we have here, these are my 316 shadow selvage denim. It's a very dark, inky blue, almost black. Very, very nice, very stylish. I brought these on my recent trip to Alaska. There's no stretch to them though, so they're not as comfortable as some of the other ones. These are my Momotaros 0306 SPs with the battle stripe. I love that battle stripe. I think that's really cool. I don't think it's too showy or ostentatious. I think it's just a nice subtle look. Super duper rigid denim and the, this hasn't stretched at all. So it fits me perfectly, but then when I start walking, it starts, it, what, my problem is, is I have sort of a bad back, a bad lumbar region in my, in my back. And so when I walk, as, as my leg goes forward, it creates tension here since there's no stretch. And so what that does is that's pulling forward on my lumbar region on my back. So I can only really wear these like once every couple weeks because it, it does sort of, they do sort of give me back problems, especially this is a higher rise waist. And so it, it's more up here in, in my back. And so as I, as I move my leg forward, it creates a tension here and that pulls forward on my lumbar region and that causes me some pain. So I don't, I love these. These are amazing denim, but I don't wear them all the time because of that. These are my Kato brand denim, Japanese selvage, beautiful, amazing cut. These are a lighter weight compared to the Momotaros, so they're easier to wear in hotter weather. Yeah, also no stretch there. And then these are my J. Crew 44 selvage denims. These do have a little bit of stretch, so these get a lot of wear. As you can see, these started out closer to, closer to this color of the Kato brand. Really dark blue inky denim, raw, raw indigo there. So these have been washed, I think twice, but I, I took these on my California trip. These are really fading out really nicely. All these fades are my own. So yeah, is, they're, they're really coming into their own look. And so these do get a little bit more wear because th these are 1% elastane. The higher percentage of elastane, the more of a stretch you get. So this is mostly all Japanese, Japanese milled denim, I believe from Kaihara or maybe not. But yeah, J. Crew 44s again. Probably my favorite pair of selvage right now. I also have another pair of selvage here. These are Target selvage denim. I decided to give these a try. Uh, these are also selvage, but uh, and they're also very, very stretchy. And they also came pre-distressed, which I know is a taboo. That's a no-no in our community, but I like them and they were like $30. <laughs> so, are they as good as the premium Japanese selvage denim? No, no. Um, they're not. I could tell that these are of a lesser quality. Pants to me are more of an accessory than a staple, if that makes sense. Whereas the boots to me feel like more of a staple. The pants are more, I've come to view pants as more of an accessory. That's why I have so many. And especially because I can get them kind of cheap from J. Crew. Cause let's be honest, like those Momotaros, those are $300. Okay. For, for $150, I could get five pairs of pants from J. Crew. So in other words, for the price of the, that one pair of Momotaros, which are a very robust pair of pants, I could get 10 from J. Crew that frankly, I enjoy wearing more because they're stretchy. These are also, these are J. Crew 484 stretch, stretch chinos in, I believe, caramel. These are a higher weight chino that you could wear in the fall and winter. So 
And by the way, I have these sort of sorted by season. So yeah, not to make this too jumbled, but some of these are seasonal. Like like this, this is a very a very lightweight gray. Like this is so, these are so lightweight, so airy, so wispy compared to these. These are fall winter chinos. These are more summer spring chinos, hot weather. So when it's hot out, there is nothing better than a really super duper lightweight pair of chinos. J. Crew 44s, most all this is, I'll, in fact, just assume that they're J. Crew 484, unless I other, specify otherwise. But yeah, also lightweight chinos, also lightweight chinos, also lightweight chinos. These are chambray 484s, super lightweight, super beautiful. Chambray is like an offshoot of denim. It's like denim's cousin. All of these, yes, are J. Crew 44s. And again, I get them. So like these super lightweight ones, they were probably 80 bucks when they were brand new. I got them for probably $30 again, because I wait for that 40% off plus additional 50% off sale. Just killer deals. What's surprising to me is not too many guys in our community seem to shop too much at J. Crew. Um, I've, I've been a J. Crew. In fact, J. Crew's the reason I'm I've been doing this all along. J. Crew introduced me to the Alden Indie, so that's partly where I sort of came into my own style, where I discovered my ideal fit when I discovered my ideal pant cut. It's been all through J. Crew. It's why I'm on Instagram. It's it's how I got started talking about fashion, talking about good boots and stuff, and just sharing my journey along the way. J. Crew truly like sparked that inspired me to get started with that and not to mention their menswear designer their former menswear designer frank mootgen he was sort of the mastermind behind the j crew ludlow suit of which i have probably 20 in my closet right now he really brought back the the heritage and combined the heritage of fine like european japanese aesthetics with a modern cut and that's where those two sort of conjoined. And that's where I find my style to this day is because of Frank Mootgen. He, he's a genius. Um, so anyways, moving on. So what should I cover next? So I have three pairs of these. These are my J. Crew cargo pants. I have one in green, one in khaki, and one in navy. These are incredible. These, these are such a manly pant. So they have the slim cut at the bottom, but they have these huge cargo pockets on the side and they look so cool. I wear these pants with my most badass boots, especially, in fact, I wear these pants with boots with a toothy lug commando sole because it really captures like a really cool military aesthetic. And not to mention there's a super cool, it's almost like a herringbone weave that these have. You can't see them unless they're super up close. You could see them on my Instagram pictures. But yeah, the three of them do. They have like a really cool herringbone weave to them that you can see up close. Oh, corduroys. Corduroys are a staple for me in the fall and the winter. I love corduroys. They're so easy to wear. The texture of corduroy is just incredible. They have such an amazing look about them. They're not boring whatsoever. They're, they're very exciting to look at because of all the texture that they have. What's really interesting is corduroy used to be known as the poor man's cotton, which I don't see how these could possibly be considered lower grade because first off, they look so good. They wear really well in the fall and the winter. They're super warm. The textures really complement like fall and winter footwear, I think. And it's not cheap either. You know, that corduroy isn't cheap. Maybe it was back in the day, cheaper alternative to maybe wool trousers. I could see that being the case, but no, I really love corduroy. I think it's a really, it's a really durable material, a very attractive material, very, just chock full of character, which I love. All right, so here's here are four pairs of 484 standard chinos. So these are just year round chinos, medium weight that, yeah, probably wear these anytime, but mostly in the fall and winter. I get compliments on this pair every time I wear them. These are a lighter weight 484 chino. It's got a really cool weft about it. These are a light green color. I get a lot of compliments on those when I wear those. Slate gray denim from J. Crew 484. This is one remaining pair of pants that I have. These were originally the J. Crew 770s. I love these pants. This is like a duck canvas type of a pant. I bought, I want to say five or seven pairs of these from J. Crew. At the time, they called them dyed denim. And what these are, the reason why I love these so much is because I could I could wear these with my indie boots. This is right when I got into boots, I got these. And then J. Crew started selling them off on sale for like 20 bucks a pair. These were originally $150 denims. 
And so I bought like three more pairs of the 770s. Then I realized that the 484 was my perfect fit. So what happened was I took all of these to a tailor and had them made into 484s essentially. But he did them a little bit too tapered and none of them ended up fitting very well. They were all a little bit too tight. He went a little bit too aggressive in the in the seat, in the saddle region. This is the one remaining pair that I have. This pair actually is the least tapered, the least aggressively tailored. So I love these pants, but they just, they don't fit me like they used to. They, these actually stretched out a ton when they were seven, 70s. They stretched out probably two, three inches in the waist. So they ended up, every time I'd buckle them, up before I had them tailored that there'd be like excess folds of fabric so I'd have to pull them off to the side it looked kind of ridiculous I had them tailored the guy just cut off all that excess and then they ended up being too tight I still do wear these because these are the most uh, relaxed fitting of the seven I think I donated the rest to charity <laughs> so hopefully somebody else is enjoying them now yeah J Crew black stretch denim burgundy stretch chinos J Crew navy corduroys, khaki corduroys, burgundy corduroys, emerald green corduroys. Again, I would have gotten all these on sale for probably around $30. I love this pant so much that I bought a second. I don't know if you guys do that. Like if I really love a pair of pants, I'll buy a second and then years later ask myself why I did that because I have so many pants and I can't wear them all as it is. Lighter green corduroys, gray corduroys, stretchy. This this entire stack is J. Crew. That's how I do it. I know a lot of guys like to shop at like Standard and Strange and stuff and th those are great shops but they charge full MSRP and, and J. Crew they don't they don't they can't offer sales like J. Crew does and that's that's where I, this is where I cut corners is with pants. I cut corners on my expenditures through through trousers. More corduroys. Here are the navy cargo pants that I was talking about. With the really cool herringbone weave in them. Okay, and then this stack right here, this is this is one worth noting. I get compliments on these. These look like tweed, they're not tweed. These are winter only pants. These are the J. Crew 484 in stretch cotton twill. I bought every single color that they had at the time. Again, these are originally probably $100, $120 pants each. And I waited until they got, went on sale. I got them all for around $30, $40. Every time I wear these, people ask me, what are those? Where did you get those? <laughs> so I know what J. Crew was trying to do with these. They were trying to imitate a tweed texture and they succeeded. What tweed is best known for is, is their like the flecking they achieve with the wool. Traditional tweed is like a thicker wool with probably two or three different colors of thread woven together to create like a uniform look, but it, the, the end result is sort of like a chunky wool. Just brilliant for winter seasonal dress. So I bought one in each color. So I have the brown, I have the green, which is a huge hit, the gray, the burgundy, the navy, and the charcoal. Yeah, every time I wear these, I get compliments. People are just so intrigued by the texture that they have. And yes, they do look like a tweed, a wool tweed, but again, they're not. These are called stretch cotton twill. And J. Crew did bring these back in the two recent winters. And I, I try to let give people a heads up because I know there's a lot of people that are interested in these. So, but J. Crew will probably run these again this winter um, because they are such a hit. Again, they run them in both their... 484 and 770 cuts and probably their 1084s as well. I'm not sure, but yeah, all I do is I just, you know, J Crew kind of makes it easy for me and I sort of developed a a strategy where I just check their site because J Crew they really do hit the nail on the head when it comes to modern style with a modern cut and a good price. That's why I I hold out for them and just see what they're doing periodically. That's also how I've acquired a lot of my sweaters too. I have a very large sweater collection, tons of hundred, $150 sweaters that I've got for 30, 40 bucks a piece that are, you know, super nice high-end sweaters. That's my pant collection. That's not all my pants. I do have a large collection of Ludlow pants that are with my Ludlow suits, but I don't wear those unless I'm wearing them with the suit. So anyways, uh, what do you guys think about this? Uh, <laughs> This was kind of an impromptu video. I just kind of wanted to share this as a look in, into my pant wardrobe because, uh, yeah, I, I do often get questions on Instagram, like, where'd you get those pants? What kind of pants are those? 
And yeah, my secret's pretty simple, J. Crew. <laughs> Anyways, what do you guys think about these? What are your pant strategies? Do you always go for the high end stuff? Do you always buy the? Are you the types that that buy the high end selvage all the time? I've got here, you know, four pairs. I'd say three really good pairs of selvage denim. That again, I, I I wear more as a rite of passage, as being a member of this community. But when it comes to my day-to-day -day wear, again, the selvage just isn't always the most practical for me. I like it, but it doesn't it doesn't spark that enthusiasm in me like good boots do. So that's why I just don't wear them all the time. Like, and again, the the whole non-stretchy thing also kind of gets me hung up a little bit. So anyways, I'm probably being redundant at this point, but anyways, thanks a lot for watching. I'll see y'all in my next video.